Hello. Come in. Take a seat. <clears throat> this is the speaking test of the International English Language Testing System, taking place on Saturday, the 29th of September, at Didtown Centre. Centre number DD783. The candidate is Javier Manuel Rico and the candidate number is 0004290. The examiner is Carol Kennedy, examiner number 433816. Good morning. My name is Carol Kennedy. Can you please tell me your full name? Uh, yes, I'm Javier Manuel Rico. And what should I call you? Uh, you can call me Xavi. Can I see your identification, please, Xavi? Thank you. Right. In the first part of the interview, I'm going to ask you some questions about yourself. So let's talk about what you do. Do you work or study? Uh, I'm still studying uh, in my final year. Uh, I've nearly finished my career, my course. And what are you studying? And do you enjoy it? Uh, I'm studying law, and yes, I do enjoy it, most aspects of it, but uh, in this final year there is a lot of hard work and uh, a lot of reading, and I cannot say that I enjoy all of this reading, but um, what I really enjoy is working on case studies. What I mean is discussing cases. Um, I like to exchange ideas with people. So what are your future plans? Uh, I want to have a career in law. Um, I have to decide which area to specialise in first and then maybe study for another four or five years. Uh, I hope to specialise in environmental law, uh, which is the law that businesses use to uh, have to abide by to ensure that their practices do not affect the environment. Let's talk about friendships. How do you spend time with your friends? Like most other people, I think, uh, having a drink or a meal. Uh, I play football sala with uh, some old friends. I think it's called Five Aside in, in this country. There are sometimes six or seven of us. Uh, I haven't been able to, to keep it up, so I'm looking forward to, to getting back into it. And is there one person you could call your best friend? Uh, I would say maybe my girlfriend is my best friend. Um, although if you ask her, maybe she doesn't say, uh, say this. Um, but among my male friends, I do not think that I have a a friend who is closer than all the others. Um, in Spain, we tend to have a big group of friends. Um, on the weekend, maybe a Friday or Saturday, we will all go out together. Um, sometimes classmates from school or university and a big group of guys and girls, 15 to 20 of us, will go out and have a meal or end up in a club or a bar and sing some music. Mm. And can you tell me about a friend you remember from your childhood? Uh, that is going back a long time. Um, there is a boy that I don't know now, but was a very good childhood friend of mine, was called Hector. Uh, we were about nine or ten years old, and we did everything together. Um, he was kind of geeky, I guess. Uh, I had other friends that um, I had similar interests with and I did sport with, but I liked Hector because he was very different. He used to play with chemistry sets and fix engines and things like this. But then we went on to different secondary schools and we made new friends and we grew apart. Now let's move on to talk about culture. Tell me about something that you feel is special to the culture in your country. I mean, it could be the food or maybe the music or, or perhaps art and literature. I could talk about any of these things, but uh, give me a moment. Uh, I think it's better that I talk about food. Um, I'm very proud of Spanish art and literature, but I think that I know most about food. You could say I'm a food expert. <laughs> um, actually, I think Spanish food could be more recognized. I mean, everybody knows dishes like tortilla and paella, and there are tapas restaurants in, in every city, but our cuisine is more sophisticated than that. And when everybody comes to Spain, they think that we only ever eat snacks, and when you go for a meal, there are loads of dishes on, on one table. 
there are some very good tapas restaurants, but most of them are, how do you say, uh, s specialized, not specialized, um, standardized, um, because they make the food so that everybody will like it. Um, it's like Italian food or Chinese food. So is there a traditional dish that's associated with your country? I'd say that there are not one traditional dish, but there are many regional dishes uh, that are famous. For example, paradilla is very famous in coastal areas, which is grilled seafood, and a good one will have every kind of fish you can imagine. Um, but if you're in the mountains, you will eat food that is from the mountains, maybe a deer or goat or things like this. But don't think that Spanish food is necessarily just about traditional dishes. Like I say, the best restaurants are the most adventurous. Thank you. Now, I'm going to give you a topic and I'd like you to talk about it for one to two minutes. You have one minute to plan what you're going to say and you can make notes if you wish. You understand? Yes. So, there's your paper and pencil. And... It's your topic. So I'd like you to describe an event that you attended recently. OK. Now you have one to two minutes for this, so don't worry if I stop you. I'll tell you when the time's up. Could you please start speaking now? I'm going to talk about my grandparents' golden wedding anniversary, which was two months ago. They're in their 70s now um, and have been married for 50 years, so it was a very special uh, day. I've been to many kind of anniversaries and parties and weddings, but I must say that I enjoy this day more than any other. Uh, it was a moving and memorable day. I think that the combination of the importance of the day and the fantastic atmosphere was, was what made it so special. This anniversary was was uh, in a country house, which in Spain we call Una Finca, which is like a, an old ranch. There were many guests who came from far and wide. This venue was perfect because there was uh, a courtyard and a big garden, a magnificent hall where we could have uh, the evening meal. My girlfriend and my brother's girlfriend, they came together with us. As soon as we arrived with everybody there, my mother, she saw everybody and started to cry. <laughs> I can tell you that my mother, she uh, cries very easily and uh, there were plenty more tears uh, on this day. There were musicians playing in the courtyard, like uh, an orchestra, uh, with just four people, and everybody had a glass of champagne. Now, perhaps the most important thing of uh, this day was the people that I saw there. I saw many uncles and aunts that I had not seen for many years, and many cousins that I had not seen since I was a boy. My mother's brother came from Canada, and uh, one of my grandfather's sisters came from Australia. It was very emotional and, and uh, it was wonderful to see my grandparents this happy. The best moment for me was when my grandfather made his speech. He thanked my grandmother for sticking with him all these years and it was not only my mother crying at this point, I can assure you. He is a very good speaker and he made everybody laugh as well. And finally, of course, they cut the cake and everybody came together for the group photo. And, Thank you. Uh, so what time did you get to bed that night? I think we were... Um, some of the last to leave at around 2 a.m. Thank you. Can I have the um, booklet, the pencil and the paper? Thank you.
Now, you've been telling me about an important event in the past that you attended. Now, in the final five minutes of this test, I'd like to ask you some more general questions that are related to this. Let's talk about past events in general. Do you think photographs are the best way to record and remember special events in our lives? That's a, a really good question. And I mean, of course, photos are uh, a part of our lives now in a way that was not possible in other eras. Um, I read the other day that more photos are taken now than ever before. And I mean, millions or maybe billions of photos every day. It's as if uh, we have to take a photo to prove that something happened. <laughs> Um, I can't understand that. I mean, I think that people want to remember special events and, and even everyday things too. And personally, I, I love taking photos when I go places and see my friends. And I also love looking at old photos. I think they can provide an, an insight into the past as well. Why do you think that? I think that they can be very powerful and remind us of special places and, and people and even remind us what we were doing this day or how we can be feeling in this in this moment and they are also a record of our lives uh, visually and for example photos of you as a baby and then as a child and that thing is an incredible thing like a diary i think it can act as a, a trigger uh, for memory as well what about written records can they also encourage us to remember past events Written records? By written records, do you mean writing things down like diaries or letters? Yes. Well, yes, I think that writing things down can definitely help us to remember the past, but also the reality is that people no longer write things down in the same way, uh, like long letters or diaries. Some people do, but I think that we have less time and, and patience nowadays, and writing is more of a luxury, I suppose. In fact, I kind of remember the last time that I put pen to paper, uh, apart from this exam. <laughs> I think I can just about stretch to a postcard. However, my mom tells me that she kept a daily diary uh, throughout her childhood, recording everything that she did. Uh, she wrote lots and lots during the school holidays especially, and I like the idea of doing that, but I know that I would never get around to actually sitting down and putting my thoughts on a page. And which do you think is better, recording important moments by taking photographs or by writing them down? Well, I'm not sure that I can come down on one side or the other. Uh, though on balance, I would say that visual image is, is more powerful. Uh, I'm trying to think of a good example here. There are so many famous photos that capture a moment in time, but one particular photo stands out for me is uh, the image of the wall coming down in Berlin, in Germany in 1989. When you look at the photos, uh, you can imagine the place and the time and the moment very, very clearly. Uh, and I think it's amazing that one image can do that. Some people think that it's more important to be concerned about events in the future than events in the past. What do you think? I'm not sure that I can agree with that because I do not believe we can make sense of the future unless we understand what happened in the past. Why do you say that? Well, in Spain we are very proud of our culture and identity and I'm sure that that is true for many people across the world. Maybe that's why so many people spend a lot of time researching back into their family history. I know that from traveling around to other countries like the UK, how important history is and how important celebrating the past is. It enables people to understand where they came from and where they are going. So in a sense, the past and, and the future are, are linked. Um, so we cannot forget the past, even if we do want to concentrate on the future. Thank you very much. That's the end of the speaking test. Thank you.